The main philosophy behind where the light gets in is all about being responsive. It's all about depending on what produce we can get and reacting to the environment around us. So in the scope of my role, I work with the Arts and Ecology program. So being responsive to the needs of the local community and making sure that we can provide interesting activities that help share our ethos with them. We like to sort of be a hub that people can sort of congregate and share their skills. And then we started to create these um, this arts and ecology series. So actually working with artists and craftspeople and creating these workshops, be that like felting with wool or dyeing with waste materials. Rosie Wilkes, who is a baker, she started working with us um, a few years ago and then founded Yellowhammer, um, which is a bakery um, that we share a lot of projects with um, down the road. Rosie, um, works very much with heritage grains and is really into sort of exploring our connection with that and bread and bringing that to people. Uh, I've defined sustainable gastronomy by working resourcefully uh, with the produce that you have available around you, not making things travel too far and keeping things um, that are in the season and available at that time. Uh, it's about taking what would be considered waste and turning that into something else. Sometimes those products can actually shine better than you know, the original thought of that product. I think sustainable cooking is about sourcing your ingredients well, treating them well, and that means using every bit, for example, um, and also your extraneous parts of that, such as your staff. You, know, you can't have sustainable cooking if you don't treat your staff sustainably, and that means proper days off, proper time uh, away from work, um, I think to be regarded as sustainable in general, it has to always be more than just about food. It's about the whole local community involved, sharing our knowledge, the things that we've learned along the way, and helping people to engage with that, learn about sort of the practices that we do, sharing those skills, and hopefully creating an environment where people can be creative. One of the dishes we'll be cooking today is the fish dish we've got on at the minute. And it's uh, so the fish of the day. So that changes kind of daily or weekly. At the minute it's mackerel. Last week it was monkfish. We've got that, which has been barbecued with some Shetland Island mussels, which have been pickled in a bit of lemon verbena. And the sauce, which is based off uh, a red Thai curry. So obviously we can't really use many of the ingredients in a Thai curry, such as coconut milk. So we've kind of really worked hard to, to sub those things out that we can't use and be resourceful with the things that we can use that, that are in season or preserved from last season. Sam has uh, a very good relationship with the farmers that we use directly. Um, he organises visits for us all to go meet them. We have very personal relationships with the suppliers that we use. The veg we get comes from an organic distributor who works much in the same way as our fish supplier. They work with small farms and small producers themselves, collect all of that produce in and distribute it out. Um, and that means that we're able to work with producers that we might not be able to work with otherwise. So um, we work with Polyspore, which is an urban mushroom farm based um, just outside of Altrincham in Tatton Park. Um, they've recently really scaled up what they do and it's amazing that you can grow mushrooms in an urban environment and really get them to the people. The oyster dish that we have on at the minute, so we're using Carlingford oysters. We always have an oyster on the menu here. It's a product that we all love working with. Um, it's based on a chicken shop sandwich from Manchester. Uh, it's a nice, playful, fun dish that everyone gets to enjoy and we get to represent a little taste of Manchester in our menu as well. Seasonality runs through it as well. Sometimes a little garnish on it will change, whether it's a pickle or preserve or something fresh that we have available to us. The garden is called The Landing and it's five minutes away from here. We'll send half of the team down on one of the days and half of the team down on another of the days. And they spend their morning down there picking their produce. Um, we pick all our herbs and some of the veg up there, fresh every day. Yeah, so the kitchen garden is on top of 
the Merseyway precinct. It's on a car park and I wanted to think about what can you grow in, a, in an urban setting. So during lockdown I started to build beds, um, slowly ended up with this small little kitchen garden that I started to plant in. And by May when the curfews were lifted, we had a few herbs and vegetables to put on plates. It initially had the idea that it would be a restaurant kitchen garden. As you know, we've responded to that, um, to the local community, um, it's been very clear that it has to have a bit more of a community focus, provide a space for people around Stockport to come relax, enjoy, and learn a bit about gardening along the way. And then since then, we've worked with loads of different local community groups. Um, work with a group called Starting Point, who take care of um, kids who qualify for school meals in the holidays. Um, we also invite schools and other sort of um, mental health awareness groups to come and people can just really enjoy the therapeutic benefits of being in a green space. I think the future is people are going to start recognising that you can't demand something's availability, uh, whether it comes to meat, fruit or veg. Things are going to start to have to travel less. Soon enough, meat's going to have to be a real big luxury because it can't be produced in the way that it is at the minute. And things are going to have to be used more resourcefully.